Hello friends, in this video I'm gonna do something with the skeleton cat. It's Halloween time and for the second or third year in a row, my Halloweeny feelings have left the building before October even arrived. So I have no inspiration. But I thought to do something that's a little of this, a little of that kind of thing. I wanted really, really badly to do something for Hispanic Heritage Month, but uh, things got in the way and I had no inspiration for that either. So I'm covering both here, I guess. I removed the jaw already and am filling in those nasty screw holes up with some paper clay delight to smooth them over a little bit. After that's dried a bit, I'm going to heat up a razor blade to help me cut through the front legs. By now I decided that I'm going to go ahead and do the thing and just make this a chihuahua. So I'm going to make the arms a little bit shorter. I'm just hot gluing them back on. If you want it to be sturdier, then add some port wires, but I'm too weak to bore into the plastic. It's too thick, go figure. I'll strengthen it later. I glue in a couple glass beads and foil in the body cavities for weight and bulk. Gluing the arms back on and adding a different shaped tip to the tail and I'm going to use hot glue to add bulk to the ears to make them a little bigger. I do the other side off camera. But I'm also going to hot glue some foil over the body on the ribs just so I can make the zombie look a little easier when I get there. Not a big deal if it doesn't stick. Also off camera, I did some carving on the face. I changed the position of the nose and widened the eye sockets to make it look more like a chihuahua. At the very least, the skeleton is a little less manufactured looking. Now I'm gonna cover some of this little guy in delight, nothing too much. I'm putting some on the arm connections and the muzzle to finish reshaping that. I also bulked the forehead with hot glue earlier and I'm gonna finish making that look appley. I'll go over anything else that I modded, like the ears. I'm gonna sand the head down when it's dry because I want it to be smooth. I had to add a little more delight to the head and tell myself that it's okay if the edges of the ears don't turn out perfect. On to the main event of the base, adding texture. This is going to be my first time corpsing something, so hopefully we'll learn by the end. I'm sure we will. I'm using this super thin, awful Scott toilet paper for this, and I'll just bunch it up with plain water for right now. I'm adding this to the pelvis cavity and around the legs, hips, and tail. I'm not concerned with where it goes or how it turns out, but I do want to keep most of the general shape of the critter discernible. When it looks alright, I'm going to apply some regular PVA glue to the outside of the paper. I'd love a dry looking skin, but I know that this paper is garbage and that my water didn't have any bonding agent in it, so hopefully this glue will do something at all. I'm also going to do this for the chest cavity, back and arms, and I'll go over everything with a mix of straight Americano Deco Art Duraclear, both glossy and matte, and leave that overnight to see what happens. Surprisingly, it dried! And it's hard! It worked! I sanded the forehead and ears again just to keep them smooth. I hate the edges of the ears, so I'll draw where I want to cut them on the side that I cut them and go ahead and do that. I sand down that raw edge. The flesh on it looks good so far. I just want to add a little more paper to get interesting looking separations between flesh and bone and skin. I'm tearing up the paper to get raw edges and then I'm brushing on some watered down matte dirt clear. That should be enough to hold it down onto the rest of this and maybe be fortunate enough to dry differently than the other paper to get a cool looking texture. I want to add a good amount to the border of the head so that these skeleton ears make some damn sense for being there. The critter will still have a scalp, but a bare face for what we're going to do later. Let's start painting! I put red and a few browns into a container and mix them up enough just to get some random bits of color onto the puppy. I'm going to paint this onto most of the base, but also have big splotches without color. I'll go in with a wash of darker brown to try and get some of the details to stick out. I'm going to use regular paint and the wash to get it to look nice. I don't want for the weird stuff inside the skull to be seen, so I'm going to fill it up with a little bit of foil. I'm going to finagle it around until I get kind of a wall, and I'm going to stick it down and give it some weird texture with the light. I've got to wait for that to dry, so I'm going to give the paint and varnish. I went with watered down Duraclear matte, and well, 
I don't know if it's just me, but sometimes when I use matte with water, then the varnish turns out less matte, so like glossier. I go over it with straight matte, but the initial varnish still makes it too glossy. I'd rather control where the gloss is, so I'll, um... Actually, first I'm gonna block in the places that are gonna be the dog's pelt, and I'll do that in white. I honestly don't want clean lines on these, but I'll go in later with the flesh color again afterwards. And then I'll spray it with Mr. Super Clear to get a matte surface again. So about painting the fur, what this animal looked like before it became a zombie. There are three types of colorful Mexican animals I can emulate for this. Alebrijes, the colorful guardian chimeras. Talavera, the floral ceramics. Or the tried and true piñata. These each have positives about them for both Hispanic heritage and Halloween. I'm going to try to include as many of those as I can, but I guess I'll see how the initial painting plan goes and then decide from there. Spoiler alert, I was only able to do one of them and it turned out being the least meaningful one for either of those prompts. Not happy about that, but my hands are grateful. So I'm going to sketch in the designs that I'm going to paint in. I'm going to do talavera patterns, so flowers and leaves and swirls and squares. I'm never good at this kind of random designing, but when it looks good enough, I'll take the arbitrary route and outline them with sharpies so the pencil doesn't smudge and I don't have to spray it again. Before I go in with paint, I'm going to scribble in just a little bit of watercolor pencils in the spaces so that I know where each color is going to go. I'm going to use red, orange, yellow, blue, light green, green, and navy. I'm trying not to have blocks of the same color touch, but I've never been good at doing that either. Some of these colors need a few more than two layers to make opaque. I'm going to try and color all the proper spots at a time right now with what I had planned and then I'll go in later and fill in whatever blank spots there are. This takes a lot out of me and makes my hands really hurt because I'm using a small brush so I do a lot of the painting off camera. You're not missing much, I promise. After I get the color blocks in, I'm going to use the same navy color to outline everything all of the places where two different colors meet. This takes me even longer than the regular painting, so I barely recorded any of it. I had to stop every few minutes because my hand was going numb like how it was before my surgery, which is concerning. <sighs> so here it is with all the outlines. I decided that I really don't feel like painting on it anymore. I was going to paint spots inside of all of the color blocks to get that alabrije aspect to the paint job, but I don't want to hold a paintbrush for any longer than I need to anymore. So I think I'm going to varnish the Tatavera. I'm painting on two coats of straight dirt clear gloss so that I can emulate some of the gloss that the ceramics have. Um, I'm going to touch up the flesh of the critter now. I'm adding in some coloring for the bone where it would be more likely to peek through. I also go in with the darker brown color to get some dimension back. I'll mix up some paint until I get an okay color to kind of dry brush over most of the flesh. I'll use this color to mush out the place between flesh and skin. It's either torn or stained, so it can't be stark. So here we are at the most important part, the calavera. I can sketch up the designs that I want. I wasn't sure at all what kinds of things to have here. I looked up Mexican folk art, but it was all like stock photos of patterns that I can't say for certain were even made by a human, you know? Uh, so I took a couple bits of iconography, which were unfortunately colonizer stuff like Catholic imagery, and I'm gonna color them how they're done in folk art. The pattern around the eyes here is supposed to emulate the Mictlantecutli death disc thing. I've got the sun and the moon on the temples, a couple swirls and feathers, and monarch butterfly wings for the ears. Like I did for the body, I'm going to sketch in where the colors are going to go. I found that warmer colors and black and white were colors with significance in Calaveras, so I used only those ones. Once again, these colors needed a few coats to make opaque, and the areas were all pretty small.
I'll clean everything up with white when it's all painted in. After that, I'll add the spots to the ears. I'm adding some more than they actually have so that they look a little more interesting. I'm gonna leave it to dry completely so that nothing smudges before I varnish it. I'm using straight dirt clear matte on the ears and I'm going in with watered down dirt clear matte for the face. I want the skull just a little glossy but not at all as much as the ceramics. I like the way that the flesh looks right now so I'm going to leave it as is. Hopefully it'll be okay but the undercoats of sealed paint from earlier should make up for if it isn't. So here's what it looks like all done. I feel like this was the roughest project I've done in a few months, at least as far as painting goes. It was nice to be able to keep the raw texture in a sculpture and it's really good to know that I can do some kind of paper mache type stuff without having to worry about it not drying. I think it's cute. I like how the Talavera came out. 